everybody. Um, my name's Tori, and I love sewing. I have stopped saying that recently, so I'm trying to bring it back. Uh, today, I have made the Globe Trotter by Billy50. Um, in this video, I get a little bit more and more sick as we go. Um, I'm not well. I have the. I assume I have the flu. I don't know. I'm not super bad. I'm just tired and achy and require a lot of water. But anyway, so I have still managed to make this, which tells me that it's an awesomely easy pattern. It's got a front zipper pocket here. Uh, so you've got a section there. And then on the inside, it's big enough. It's got a pocket on the back and it's big enough to hold a passport. So this is a great little travel bag. It also comes with a card slot thing, but I didn't do that today uh, because I'm not feeling well. And I also just used my strapping because it was quick and fun and it kind of goes with the fabric so it was fine so if you'd like to see how this is made please stay tuned morning guys i'm just gonna do a quick video today because i am not a hundred percent and neither is my child actually all right so i'm gonna start with the outside so we want front and bottom i can show you these because there's no markings um i've clipped all of my pieces together and Except for the main front and back, everything else was interfaced with a woven medium because that's what I decided to do. So I'm going to take my lining right sides up and my zipper right sides up and then my outer right sides down to make my zipper sandwich. We're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch. I'm going to go along the edge like that and then I trim off that tail so it doesn't annoy me. I flip these over and then I'm going to top stitch along the edge. So all my top stitching is always an eighth of an inch um, or the middle of the uh, side of my foot is actually how I eyeball that. All right, so that is now sewn right along there. So we're going to take the top one. Now there's no top lining for this. Pop that aside. I'm going to put this right sides down. And we're going to stitch. And I missed that skull completely. Stitch along there. And then I've cut two of these, whether I was meant to. Yeah, so we cut two of these. So I'm going to take this, and line it up on here, because that's where it's going to end up anyway. And I'm going to top stitch this top section to the back piece so that you won't see it. But then when you open the pocket, you're still going to have a back. So I'm just going to stitch it an eighth of an inch, and I'm lining it up with the edge of the fabric. I also did fussy cut these two pieces so that we would have, like, something fun here and here. So this is officially the last of this fabric. Um, and if you're wondering where I got it from, it was a Missy Rose pre-order. So now I'm just going to fold that back, crack my zip, and I'm putting, I'm using smooth criminal zips today. Obviously the day that I named that, I was most likely listening to Michael Jackson. Or Alien Ant Farm. Which is just a cover of the Michael Jackson song. It is in my rotation, so that's probably where I got the name for these from. Alright. So now I've got the zip, I'm going to leave it roughly in the middle. And then I can baste all of this together. Actually, no, we're not going to do that yet because we're still going to base the other one. Okay, so back to our main panels, and I'm going to grab a lining one. And I'm going to take my lining pocket. Now, I'm not doing the card slots in this today, mainly just because I don't feel very well. Um, but the card slots are always much of a muchness. So you've got to um, mark all of the things and then make them accordion so you fold it over and then back and then over and then back um i always like to top stitch the accordion pockets just because i think it gives like a little added something and i'm just going to 
fold this over with my fingers and then top stitch this edge. You could iron this. If you're not good at just kind of going with it like this, feel free to iron it and that'll hold this in place and then you won't need to stitch it from the back like I have to. You can stitch it from the front. And that just gets rid of our raw edge. Another thing you could have do, because we are going to bind this, another thing you could do is just bind the top of this pocket. That would also be very, very cute. So I'm going to take one of my inner pieces and I'm just going to baste this along. Now this is the pocket for your passport. So I'm just going to baste this on. I'm going to backstitch even though it's basting because backstitching is a good habit to be in. And backstitch at the other end. Now if you were going to be doing a um, the card slots, you'd be putting it on your other lining piece. But I'm not. I might make another video another day when I feel better and do them. But for today, that's not going to happen. Alright, so I'm going to now baste everything together. So I'm going to grab my outer. And I'm going to grab, this would normally have, well you could do it either way. So you could either put your passport on the back of the front one. Or you could put your card slots one. Because I don't have anything on this, I'm going to put this one on the back. So that there's not a bulk of pockets on one particular section. That's how I justify doing it this way. And then I'm just going to base them all together. So you'll notice that I'm just twisting my hand to go around the edges. I never realized that's how I turned a corner, um, but it is. So now that I'm conscious of it, I let you guys know that I'm doing it. So now we should have this. And we're going to do the same to the back one. So again, we're just going to put it on, line it all up. I do actually quite like this rose fabric. I got the rose fabric off a D stash page. Uh, I think it was the Great Australian D stash. Um, just because they had some other fabric that I really wanted at the time. And when we get back to the start, I'm going to backstitch again. Um, I'm going to do my strap now because it's the next thing on the top of the pile. So I'm just using my pre-cut strapping pieces that I sell because uh, it's really quick. So you just need your two clips and a strap adjuster. So we're going to start with the strap adjuster and just feed it through and around that middle bar. And then I'm going to do my zigzag because I'm still obsessed with the zigzag. So I always start near the hardware. I'm going to stitch, I'm going to back stitch, I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to pivot and go diagonally down to the corner, making sure that your tails are out of the way, and then pivot and go along the bottom, and then back up to where we started, pulling the hardware out of the way so we don't sew over it, and then back stitch. So it makes this fun little zigzag. Some people also stitch all the way around again, like around the square, so that you get the sides as well. But that is very secure, especially with the thread that I'm using. Uh, so this is Vardenum's 40 weight, M40, uh, bonded nylon. I like nylon more than polyester thread. Don't really know why. I've used both, I just prefer nylon. That's my personal preference. Don't think that you have to copy me on that one. Alright, so I'm going to do the zigzag again. So 
So I'm going to back stitch, and we always start at the hardware side so that your foot can be up against it and we don't over stitch later. Because it is a thing that I have done when I start at the bottom, which is why I no longer do that. Tried and tested. All right, and then we're going to back stitch when we get back up there. And so that is our strap done. Um, in Billy 50's tutorial, she gets some HTV or heat transfer vinyl and puts cool designs on here. Um, again, I'm probably not going to do that today. I don't think I'm even going to pull out the scan and cut today. I popped it away for the week. All right, zipper time. So the first thing we actually want to do is create our zipper tabs. Uh, I'm going to use double-sided tape for this. I have interfaced this as well with the woven medium. Because all of my fabric was only like a cotton weight, I wanted to interface everything to make it thicker. Um, but if you're using waterproof canvas, obviously you don't need to. I could have also just used some strapping for these. I mean, I still could. The roll of strapping's right next to me. But I've cut them now. I do love strapping as a quick alternative. Now my D-rings are going to look massive against this, but oh well. So I've only got big ones in stock at the moment. I don't have any of my smaller ones. So I'm going to fold it over so the join side is touching the ring. So the nice side's outside. And then I'm just going to use two clips and clip it to the zipper. One there. One there. I'm going to do the same to the other end. Now I've cut this zip exactly the size that uh, the pattern says, but I'm actually not sure if I've printed this at 100% or not. So if this doesn't fit, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Because sometimes my printer will print at 100% and sometimes it tries to be sneaky. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I forgot my zipper pulled. So we need to go back and do that. It's very important to put your zipper pull on before you start stitching. You could do one end. Um, and if you're going to use two zippers, obviously put both of them on now. I'm just going to use the one. So I'm just pushing both sides in evenly and then I'm twisting it. Sometimes it doesn't want to go. Think today is going to be one of those days. Come on, I can feel you there. Nope, okay. But sometimes when this happens, I just try it from the other end and it works. And that could be me, it could be the zip, although I don't think it's the zip because every other time I can do it from any end, I think it's because I'm not well. It's cool, it will not defeat me. I hope. These are definitely nylon zips. I've decided I'm not going to dabble in resin or metal zips. I'm just going to stick with resin because it works. All right, I'm going to hit pause and I am going to get this zip on. Oh, there it goes. Ha! Ha ha ha. Right, so now, again, I'm going to just clip that back onto there. And I've got, whichever side I want up is the side that I'm doing up. Now, normally, I would pull this all the way off to close the other end. Uh, but since the zip's fighting me today, I don't really want to do that. So I'm not going to. I am just going to hold it there with clips, which does the same thing, really. And so now we need our last piece, which is the bottom gusset. So we are going to go lining sides up, zipper sides up. 
And I've noticed a lot of people do this the other way, where they have this one and then build everything down. I think it's easier if everything's up. That's why I do it that way. Right, and then I'm going to grab this one and put it down. Grab it all in there. And then I'm going to go and do the same to the other end, because I may as well just build it all at once. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. And then just open up and grab everything. Ta-da! So now it should look like this. So I'm going to stitch across the end slowly because there's now quite a few layers going on and I'm not in a hurry and I don't want to accident accidentally get my fingers and then I'm going to chain stitch this so I'm just going to swivel this around and ignore what's going on here and we're going to stick it under and we're going to back stitch And then trim off the tails. And then pull it out like this. And now I'm going to top stitch everything. Oops. Actually, I'm going to top stitch one side and then make sure that the other side, like the whole thing, fits. Because again, I wasn't sure. And if I top stitch both ends right now, it means I've got to unpick two lots of stitching. And we all know how much I hate unpicking. So I'm just going to stitch the one. And then I'm going to test it. Whoop. Okay. So I need to find the center bottom. So I'm just going to line both of these up. Grab it here. Actually, yeah, no, I'm going to do it this way. So I'm just going to do a quick clip around to make sure that it's exactly where I need it to be. And make sure it's the right size. So centre bottom, around the corner, up, up. It's very important to check, so I'm going to check. Across. Make sure you do the corners properly, otherwise it may not think that it fits. And mine is a little bit big. See? I knew it. So, the end that I didn't top stitch, I am just going to come along, top stitch some more. I'm going to go all the way up to there. And in actual fact, I can do that probably to the other end because I needed a little bit more than that. So I'm actually just going to top stitch, unpick the one top stitching. And by unpick, I actually mean I go to the back and I clip the stitches. I, I usually do about every third or fourth. Um, and then when you flip it over and you pull on the top, so I just, it should just come out. It's usually what happens. So I've got to be able to grab one first. See? Look at that. That was pretty quick. Alright, so then I'm going to do the same again. I'm just going to pinch it together and sew up higher, basically. Making sure that I'm not getting the D-ring. It's pretty important. You don't want to stitch the D-ring. You'll just shatter your needle. And I'm always worried if it's going to shatter, that it's going to go straight in my eye. Okay, that'll be better. So now I can flip it over and top stitch. Trim off the tails. We're going to top stitch the other end. There we go. And then I want to also ugh, cut that off because it's annoying me. Right. I'm also going to stitch the gusset pieces together so that they won't shift while I'm trying to stitch them later. So I just need to lay it down and right on the edge, line them up and top stitch the edges. 
Did I just run out of bobbin thread? Genuinely wouldn't surprise me if I did. Alright, so that's one side. And then we're just going to come along and we're going to do the other side as well. Hold everything nice and together. And I'm doing this basically an eighth of an inch, so right on the edge. I should have also mentioned, if your gusset is wider than your zipper tape, trim it down so it's the same. If you're using a different type of tape, it might not be this wide. So you do need to adjust it so that it's all even and glorious. Okay, so now I'm going to find halfway. I'm going to add clips. You could also clip it with your scissors. Um, I don't like clipping my zip. It's a thing that I don't like to do. I know a lot of patterns do it. I know a lot of people do it. I personally don't like it. So I'm not doing it. The zipper tape tends to fray a lot when you start clipping chunks out of it. It doesn't like it. All right. I don't want other scissors. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to clip the center of the fabric pieces, though. So I'm just going to do top and bottom center because that's where we've marked on the thing. You could do all four points if you wanted to, but this is small enough. I reckon I can get away with just the two. Because that's just who I am. All right, so outside, outside, flip it so it's right sides together. And we're going to stitch it so that the outsides are together, like this. And then we're going to bind it. I love a good binding. In fact, I might even get out my fancy binding thing. I have this really cool thing that you can buy for industrial machines. And it does the binding for you. It looks big and scary, but it's really not. So I might even do that today. But first we've got a clip. So I'm clipping along the bottom and then I'm going to come and I'm going to clip the top so that we now know what we're dealing with. I'm not clipping the curves yet. You'll notice I'm stopping right before them. Right, and so this now has to go in that space. So, 3D object, people, we're going to push it so it sits like a 3D object. Now, you can do it either way. You can push away like this, or you can push towards. That is your choice. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. I'm going to make sure that the D-ring is out of the way and I'm going to make sure that there's a clip there to ensure that. And then again, see, 3D object, if you tuck that, it fits. If I had have done it the other way, if I hadn't have done that extra little quarter inch, it wouldn't have fitted properly. And then the curves would have had all gathering on them, which I don't want. Oh. Okay, I'm going to have to stop there. I need a drink of water and I'll also get my binding and then I'll come back. We'll finish up. All right, I finished clipping. So we've got lots of clips going on. Now I'm going to stitch it together. So I just want to start on any flat area. So I'm going to start at the top this time. You can start at the side, at the back, or whatever. Doesn't really matter. And I like stitching gusset side up. I do find it easier, although I did not put enough clips in this corner and it just let go. So that's okay. It did fit. Right, so I'm pulling that D ring out of the way. So that we don't accidentally stitch over the metal. That would be bad. I 
again, day ring out of the way. And backstitch when we get back to the start. Because I didn't backstitch at the front. Boom. One down. One side to go. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to put right sides together. Clip. Turning out to be quite cute. I like it. Alright, so straight bits at the bottom. And we're going to come up. You can even unzip this if you want to. If that's going to make it easier for you to do curves, feel free to unzip it. I'm going to switch it so that I can see the zipper. Well. So now I've done the top and the bottom. I'm going to come around from the bottom. Now this side's probably going to be a little bit trickier for you. I'm not going to lie. Because you've got the other piece in the way. And the gusset is pretty small. But that is no reason to give up. And again, push the D-ring out of the way. I would possibly recommend using a half or three quarter inch D-ring for this particular project. So it doesn't get in your way. I've only got one inches at the moment. I really need to order some more. In fact, I might do that after this video. All right. And then, the zipper right on the edge of the curve. And then I can come and do the other side. You'll notice I'm using more clips on this one than the other one. That's because I'm now fighting the other side as well. Because I did interface every piece of fabric. Because that's who I am. This would also be really cute in vinyl, I reckon. Probably should have done it in vinyl, but that's cool. There's always another day. It's always next week. If you do market stalls and stuff, these would be really cool to make when we see an end to Corona. Because they hold your passport and stuff. They're great little, like, travelling bags. They're lightweight, they're compact, and they fit the important stuff. Uh, so if you do market stalls, I would recommend this as like a passport bag. So again, I'm going round. I'm pulling clips off as I go. I'm making sure this D-ring is indeed out of my way. And I'm going to hand crank this because I'm just paranoid. I know that. I don't feel like snapping a needle. And then I'm just going to keep pulling the top piece out of the way. And cleaning up my clips as I go because I like a tidy area. Is that still stitching? No, it is not. I've run out of bobbin thread. I did. I will get another black one in a minute. For now, I'm going with uh, wine or maroon or deep red or whatever colour you call it. Just so I can continue. I was on a roll. Right. Hold that thought. The zipper has moved, so, whoops, should be less worried about needles and more worried about clips getting them in the eye, I think. There we 
bring it all the way up like that and then add lots of clips because it shifts when you stitch it that's better i know that looks excessive okay i, I am aware of how it looks but the first time i stitched it it shifted from the edge so now what now it can't D rings well and truly out of the way. Still paranoid though. And back stitch. Awesome. So there's a couple of ways to do binding. Um, I'm going to do it like a quilt because why not? Uh, so the first thing you need to do is fold it in half, and then we're going to stitch it on again. You can do it two ways. You can iron it in half and then iron both sides into the center, open it out, stitch it, and then fold it around. Or you can just fold it in half, we can stitch it on, and then we just fold it over. Or you can iron it, clip it on the way you want it, and then stitch it. So many options. Alright, so I'm just going to keep folding it in half as I go, because everything else is not going to move on me now. And I'm probably going to need a second piece. I didn't really think that through terribly well. We want to fold this out of the way. So I'm still folding it in half. And it definitely would have been easier if I had ironed it in half first. So if I need a second piece, we're going to do that. I'm just so I I'm just sewing it to the edge. So I'm making sure the edge of the black touches the edge of the fabric. That's pretty much all I'm doing. I'm gonna adjust with my needle in the down position. And again, if you wanted to, you could definitely um pre iron this. Open the zipper up, move it out the way. Around the bend. Alright, so I'm definitely going to need a second piece for the other side. And then when we get back to the start, I'll show you what we're doing. So I'm nearly to the start now. So that first piece, I didn't sew right at the edge. I kind of left a little bit. So what I'm going to do, chop off the excess. And then I'm going to encase the other side. So I'm going to fold this over so that it's going to encase the other side so that we don't see any raw edges. And then I'm just going to fold it in on itself like that. So now when we stitch it, there's no raw edge there. I do, however, have to just get a little bit closer. Like that. Excellent. Alright, so I am going to go and get a second piece of my binding. And I'm also going to wind a black bobbin. And then we'll come back and finish right. up. Bobbin done. I have another piece. So let's finish the other side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up and over and then get a lot of wonder clips and clip it down 
So this is just encasing all of the raw edges and because we folded it in half there is now no raw edge on this side. With the corners sometimes you really got to kind of pull it right up to get over there. Um, as usual I always put more clips in corners. And trim off any tails you may come across. Um, it could just be from the fabric or previous stitching or whatever. So again, up and over. And so the idea is, is this is supposed to cover the other stitches. Now, upon reflection, I possibly should have done a red or green for the binding. Um, I'm not even sure if I have those solid colors. I could have also used this as the binding just to make it really blend in. That would have worked too. Uh, but I find black is the most forgiving of all the colors for binding. Also, if you're new to binding and you're super worried, make sure you've got a dark inside so that you can use black as your binding color. You're going to find it works wonders for you. Right, so we're just going to clip around. Trimming off any kind of excess fabric you may find. Now here, I've gone a little bit too deep to get my binding around. So I'm going to just come and trim so I'm closer to the stitches. Now these are the wrong scissors. I should really be using my vinyl scissors because of the thickness of what I'm cutting. Um, but I buried them under all the paper. Okay, so then we can come up and around. And again, you kind of pull on it so it comes around. That's all the trimming I just did. Pull it up and it will come over. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of motivation. So I'm not saying like rip it off. Definitely just tug on it slightly. And again, I always need more clips in the corner. So then here's where our join is. Now technically these two pieces aren't joined, but that's okay. I do actually have to cut a little bit more off there. My other scissors didn't do it. Because there's so many layers right there, I just want to go and get nice and close to the stitching. And now it should work. Yeah, see? Look at that. Much better. It actually goes around now. So you can use as many or as little uh, clips as you need. Lots of fiddliness. So the more clips I use, the easier and smoother the top stitching will go because I won't have to fiddle with it as I'm trying to stitch it because I've already done that and then clipped it in place with a gazillion clips. Right, that looks pretty good. I do one more. So now that's what we've got. I would like to stitch it this side up so that I can see and make sure that I'm catching everything. So I'm just going to pop straight under on a straight edge. This time I'm starting on the side. There's no you can start wherever you want. Back stitch. And then we're gonna try and hold it like the 3D object it is, while also not getting the other side of the gusset caught in your stitches. So this is a little bit fiddly. It's not difficult. Right, this is not a hard thing. I'm not feeling well at all. And I can still do it, so that's a good sign. But it is it is fiddly. 
Mainly because you have to make sure I'm pulling that out constantly so that we don't accidentally stitch it in. That's all. And I'm up to the join. So I'm going slower because it's thicker. getting up to the side where the d-ring's gonna be so I'm gonna slow down and be super conscious about that so I don't stitch it because let's not play that game and snap a needle and then this end will be easier because you can open your zip up those tails because they're annoying me. We're coming around the curve. Needle down. I'm going to pull out the D-ring. Anything else that may be in my way like the zipper. And I'm going to just crank past that super thick part. My foot's completely off the pedal so that I don't accidentally move it and get my finger. And then we're going to backstitch when we're back to the start. And voila, completely encased raw edges. Um, so I'm just going to repeat all of that with the other side. First thing I want to do is trim off any weird excess. So if you do that now, it's going to make binding it easier. Try not to um, cut your zipper tape though. That's pretty important. You don't want to cut your zipper tape because it'll start fraying and you don't want that. Trust me. Okay. Get rid of all of that mess. So again, we're going to go in half. We're going to start on a straight edge and we're going to start stitching like an inch from the edge. So you just want a little bit of overhang to make it easier when we do the other bit. You also want to pull off all of these. That's my fabric, uh, which shouldn't be fraying because I interface it, but apparently it's doing it anyway. So, again, on we go. You could even stitch it from the other side if you want to, but I feel like because I'm not clipping this, this is the easier option for me. Um, you can clip this on if you're struggling. Don't think you have to do it this way. I just am. There's no rule that says you have to. So we're just pulling this. Stitching around, we're going to go slowly when we get to the D-ring, and we're there now. I'm pushing the zipper out of the way so that we're not going to get it. If you stitch the zipper, you're going to have to come back and unpick it all. Obviously, you can't stitch your zipper shut if you've stitched it to your binding. So I'm just using one hand to pull it away and the other hand to kind of hold the binding in place. You can move that top piece completely out of the way. I'm doing that with like this finger. This finger's holding that. These fingers are holding the binding together and then my other hand is pushing the zipper tape out of the way. There's a lot going on, but Again, if you can't do it like that, that's fine. Just use clips. That's what clips do. 
Right, so we're going to go slowly again here because there's a D-ring, there's a zipper pull. There's a lot of hardware right here. It's like all culminated in one spot because we've got the zipper open, which is fine. All right, so I'm nearly back to the start. I'm just going to push that out of the way. And then pull that out of the way. Come around. Now, again, I've got this excess. So, cut it. You can even open it and fold it over. you got options. But basically, you just want to fold it so there's no raw edges. You don't want raw edges is pretty much the name of the game right now. Well, I'm going to fold these in like that and then just feed that other piece straight over like that. Line it all up and boom. And then when we get back to the start, we are going to backstitch again. And where I just folded all that over, I'm going to chop out the little bit of excess fabric to make it easier to turn. And then we're just going to... I like to go around and roughly flick it over, the whole thing. I find it works easier for me. Like that. And then I can come and start actually clipping it down. You want to put your clips pretty close. But this is the last seam because we've already made our strap. Now you could do your strap a whole bunch of fun ways. Um, one of these days I'm going to do a sewing candy and all the different ways I know how to do straps. Um, just not this week. I think I'm going back to bed after this. I was feeling good, that's why I got up and started this, but I have since gone greatly downhill. In my breaks in this video, I probably sculled nearly a litre of water. Imagine I'm going to need the toilet soon. So again, I'm just going around. It's all clipping lovely. We just have to be conscious of this thick part where all the hardware is. Because um, you can feel it. It, it is thicker there because everything's kind of, I guess, congested. But it's still sewable. It's not impossible. It's just a bit fiddly, that's all. I'm going to put an extra clip there because it won't stay. There we go. Right, I see a tail. So we're going to chop off any tails that we come across. You can also tuck them in if you're... Like this one, well, that one just came off. But there was one just there. So I could have just kind of tucked it under. Sometimes I do. And if they're too long, sometimes I'll cut them off. It's just dependent on the moment. So you can either just run your finger up under it like this and that'll tuck the raw, like the, the edgy parts in. Another way I could have done this is use my polyester binding and just use my binding machine. Would have taken f like four minutes max to do the whole lot. But not everybody has one of those machines and everybody can make this. I promise it's probably not as hard as I'm making it look today. <sighs> Alright, so this is that last little bit where the binding overlaps. So this will be the thickest part to sew. Um, 
So you don't want to start there because you don't want to have to backstitch over the thick part. That's how you snap needles. So you want to pick any other spot. I'm going to pick here because he's calling to me. Um, whoops. Right. That, you know, I also don't want to start on the thick part of here. So I'm going to start at this yellow clip because why not? So we're just going to go under. Now you can do a couple of stitches and if you don't want to back stitch, just lift it up and go sew through the first hole again. That will also look in the stitches. You also want to stop with your needle down before you readjust that underneath part. clippers out of the way because they are definitely in my way. So I'm now going over the thick part. You want to go slowly. You want to move your clips out of the way. You want to move the other side out of the way. Off we go again. Alright, so I'm coming up to where all the hardware is. This is the hardware side. So I've got my zipper, a D-ring. And so I'm just going to manually crank it until I get past because I don't want to break anything. a good run. Right, I can see my tails, so I'm going to trim them off now, because I've only got like a couple of inches to go. Alright, I'm up to the thick bit. So again, I'm going slowly, mainly because I don't want to snap a needle, not because my machine can't handle it. Oh, look at that. Bob's your uncle. So now we just turn it through. You want to push? I'm going to get my stick. I need my turning stick for this today. You just push. We've got this lovely little gusset going on like so and then you can zip her up that's something else I forgot to mention make sure your zippers close on the right side I fluked that um, but yeah apparently I subconsciously thought about it and didn't tell you but another thing you want to maybe consider is using zippers that have like a hole and then you could zip them shut if you wanted to like lock people out of it and then you can just add your strap and it's done. Look at that. Bob's your uncle. All right, guys. Um, I will be back sometime next week, I think. But until then, see you later.